Hi everybody and welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Justin Caffrey. If you would like to follow me on a regular basis, you can reach out to me on Instagram, Justin underscore Caffrey, and on Twitter at Justin Caffrey. So come on over, connect with me over there, and I share more of my insights and views on a regular basis across those two channels. And most importantly, if you haven't done already, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It makes a big difference. Share this with friends or family or people that you think could benefit from it. Put your comments below. I read all my comments and I respond to them within a few days. And of course, lastly, if you would like to get a deeper dive into the neuroscience of the vagus nerve and how we can recover from whatever's going on, you can check out my course. If you go to remotetribe.co.uk, you can get more information there and sign up and join me on the course. So let's move to today. What I want to do today is just talk a little bit about our nervous system and how it reacts and where often those reactions come from. Quite often you can feel stressed and anxious and there may be issues or moments going on in your life right now that are causing high levels of stress and anxiety. And you may be sitting there thinking, why can't I just think my way out of this? This is a fear that may be feeling irrational, but when it's on and when you're in that moment, the irrational nature of the fear is overwhelming. There's a couple of key things to just unpack here. Most importantly, when we're thinking rationally, we're talking to each other calmly, we're operating in our prefrontal cortex. This is the executive function. And often a good way to think about this is, this is your wise owl. This is where you're aware of situations, you know what's going on, and you can regulate yourself quite well. When we get caught in fear, we go into our primal brain. And in that primal brain, in that limbic system, we move into what can be referred to as your guard dog. And your guard dog is a much more basic being. Your guard dog is literally looking to either fight or flight from any situation. It's not going to be there to kind of discern and understand what's going on. It has no wisdom. It's very primal. So when you're in that moment trying to navigate a bit of fear or something comes up or somebody triggers you, what happens is the wise owl flies away and all that you're left with is the guard dog. And in that moment, you have to move through it and get out the other side. And that can often be moving from the situation. So even taking a fast paced walk outside can help trigger the nervous system to feel the flight response and it can deregulate. And when it deregulates, the wise owl can come back. And you may have experiences that are really triggering, really challenging, really difficult. And if you want to look at working through some of those bigger issues, by all means, you can reach out to me and we can look at it on a one-to-one -one basis. But some of this work can actually be done by yourself. But it's hard. It's difficult. It's difficult to face into the situation. But what we want to do is we want to be able to put the guard dog to sleep and bring the wise owl into play and bringing some of those connections and emotions are key so that we can unlearn behaviors that our nervous system keeps going to. So instead of our nervous system going to that fight and flight mode, our nervous system starts to meet new challenges. And it's almost saying, ah, we could actually have the wise owl here instead of the guard dog we could choose to decide our next steps before we dive in. But it requires you to do the work, to go back and allow the nervous system to re-experience these feelings. If you know my story, you know that I lost my, my son, Joshua, 10 years ago. And that's a really good example of an experience that I went through using this technique because I would only ever see Joshua's death as like a flashback and typically only moments when I was not able to distract myself. And that used to be on planes. I used to fly an awful lot for business and it would be a takeoff and landing when you'd have to take off your headphones, you have to close down your laptop, or your phone, and I'd have no distractions. So I'd be left with that moment where I'd see these kind of flashback moments of Joshua's death. But when I was using this wiper technique and I allowed myself to go through that whole experience, I would literally be going back to the moment of his birth, running through his life to his death, then going back from his death right to the moment of his birth, and then forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards, just like I teach on that wiper technique. I started to find a bit of ease and I started to notice that 
the stress that I felt and the tightness in my chest that I felt was starting to come down. And my nervous system was starting to realize that it's not actually happening now. It happened in the past. And after several sessions where I would revisit this, I started to settle the memory in a much easier way. And it's almost like the memory moved from this traumatic point into the normal memory where I'm thinking about last Christmas or previous holidays or other memories. Of course, it's still hurtful that I lost my son, but it's not a memory that's trapped and caught in a traumatic sense. I've started to find peace with the memory and I've allowed it to exist in my past, which means when I access that, access that memory and I talk about Joshua right now, it's wise L. It's not guard dog. There's no tension in my body. I'm not feeling stressed as I communicate about it. So we can unlearn behaviors. We can unlearn behaviors dealing with stress and anxiety. We can normalize stressful events in our life and bring ease to our mind and body. But the work is hard. So, but resolving these emotions over time and trying to access a way to get the nervous system to better regulate itself often requires us to really look back at some key events in our life. And an exercise on this point can be quite helpful that if you just take out a piece of paper and simply on the piece of paper, all I want you to do is to go back to your earliest memory of your childhood. And I want you to just take a few breaths, breathing in, breathing out, deep breath in, slow breath out, deep breath in, slow breath out. And then just write down as you move through the chronology of your life, earliest memory right up to the current moment, all the events in your life that have been stressful, that have been high anxiety, that have triggered some sense of trauma or anxiety or anger or hatred or fear or you know loathing, whatever those big moments are. If you look through your life and just say, okay, I want to look at all the key events from the first moment to this moment, whatever comes up is important. So sometimes we can see the moment where a kid that you know bullied me when I was nine years of old in school, as an adult, we can look back at that and think, I don't need to look at that. That's not really relevant. You know, I'm fully capable and aware of managing my emotions now, and I shouldn't have allowed that to get to me. What's important is to realize that as that child, as that nine-year-old child, your life revolved around family, school. And if you felt threatened in that school environment, well, that interaction with that nine-year-old kid is really relevant because your nervous system has taken a photograph of that and has seen it as a big threatening moment in your life. So we need to do a little bit of work in there. And it will be the equivalent today of somebody taking away your house, your home, your job, something huge, catastrophic. So we have to be able to orientate ourselves and to recognize that the nine-year-old's response to that moment was significant because that issue was a huge part of your life at that moment. So taking down that piece of paper and writing through all of those key events right up to the current moment. And what's really important is how we're responding to stress and anxiety in this moment is a learned behavior within our nervous system. So we'll also be able to identify Typically, a caregiver in childhood may have had their own issues with stress, anxiety, alcohol, drugs, whatever poor maladaptive behavior they may have had. When we're learning as children, we're looking to get direction at that young age. So if a parent was stressed or anxious or depressed and they had something stressful appear in their life, you would have been learning, I see how they behave, and then what they do next is the behavior that we follow when stress comes. So subconsciously, if you think about it and think about your behavior in that stress and anxious moment when your wise owl flies away and you're left with your guard dog, does that look like a parent or a caregiver in your early childhood? Recognizing that and understanding that can be really helpful because it's a learned behavior and learned behaviors can be unlearned. We have no evidence to show that there's any genetic predisposition to anxiety, stress, or depression. So most experiences are learned experiences. There's some epigenetics around it, but in general terms, 
There's nothing to give that away. So most people have learned that because we're born into this world without fear and we learn behaviors from caregivers. So your current behavior on the last traumatic moment or the last big stress in your life is most likely a learned experience right back to childhood. And every one of those events that you've written down, you will have generally behaved in the same way. So your nervous system keeps reinforcing behavior, reinforcing behavior, reinforcing behavior. So if you have seven or eight things on your sheet or 10 or 20 things on your sheet, each time something has happened, you will notice I go to the same position. You know, maybe I flight, I leave relationships, I leave jobs, I leave countries, I leave houses, I leave friendships, because that's the behavior that you learned to withdraw and move away. Or I freeze, I'm stuck, I'm indecision, I'm not able to make that decision, and that's the behavior. Or it may be fight. You know, I get drawn into high levels of emotion and I become very volatile because, again, that's a behavior. That's what I saw as a child. So as you see each one of those and they appear, you now have a list of key things that your nervous system has programmed in and has a memory. And that memory is based on how you experienced it in that moment, not about how you look back at it now and think, well, it was kind of trivial. It's the moment. And that's how the experience is held inside the nervous system. I have a, another video, which is called a wiper technique, and you can use this to try out on some of these experiences. And what the wiper technique will do is it will allow your nervous system and your mind to re-engage with that experience. And you get to see it over and over again. And what we do is we orientate that experience back into this moment so that we allow our nervous system to understand, ah, it's not actually here, it is in the past. And as our nervous system gets used to the experience, the level of angst and stress attached to the experience starts to just come down, come down, come down, come down. And we start to just get a bit of freedom in the mind and the body and some of those historical experiences. So start off with this with some of the minor things on your list and see how that goes and see how it feels, play around with it and sit with it and, and notice it. It can also be really helpful as you're going through this experience that you use my hand pressing technique, which just allows you to regulate your breath and your nervous system at the same time. So doing that six or nine times in advance of doing a session on the wiper technique, looking at your list can be a really helpful little process for you to move through. So let me know how you think this video has worked out for you. If you tried the technique, put the comments below. I do get back to them. And please, you know, like and subscribe to this channel. It makes a big difference to me to know that we're connecting and we're sharing. If you know somebody who you think could benefit from this video, please share it and send it on.